Well, the states begin to move into the next phase of their vaccine rollouts. One group is in limbo, pregnant and breastfeeding women. They were not included in these clinical trials, and they're often not included in most clinical trials, despite leading scientists saying when asked, they want to be. So for the COVID vaccine, there is not much data on side effects, safety or efficacy for this group. I spoke with the author of a new book that explores how women have been left out of medical research, and I talked to a pregnant health care professional about whether she'll get the COVID vaccine. It's something I'm really grappling with. Um, so it's a topic that I've been thinking a lot about recently. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I think, day to day, um, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to make up my mind since I have the good fortune of being able to get the vaccine soon. Audrey Neff and her husband are expecting, and as she enters her last trimester of pregnancy, in the midst of this ongoing and persistent global pandemic, she's concerned about getting the COVID vaccine, mainly because... I'm a very data-focused person, so um, when there's no data out there, I don't feel you know, super confident in saying, yeah, for sure, this is safe. This is probably one of the most anticipated vaccines in our lifetime. And once again, we don't know what the impact is on pregnant women or breastfeeding women because they're not being included in the clinical trials. There are a lot of pregnant women that want to be tested on. When it comes to our health, <laughs> it's almost like women's health and pregnant women's health is just an afterthought when we actually should be the priority. But it's not just the COVID vaccine clinical trials that author of Hysterical, How Sexism Kills Women, Anusha Hossein, points to as problematic. Until the early 1990s, women were not included in clinical trials and she says to this day, the medical industry still excludes women from research, a fact backed by recent research at the University of California, Berkeley and the University of Chicago. Right now, the standard really for health is uh, a middle aged white male. And that is a really big problem. We know better. We should do better. And women not only need to be a priority, women of color need to be a priority. As for Audrey, she is confident in the COVID vaccine, just not for her right now. I feel more comfortable for sure postpartum, you know, getting it. And if I, frankly, if I weren't pregnant, I would have, you know, signed myself up as soon as I could. So if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, what should you do? Joining me right now is Dr. Sarah Crimmins, Medical Director of Labor and Delivery at University of Maryland Medical Center. For some advice, now Dr. Crimmins, it's great to have you here. Thank you for taking time away from delivering babies to join us. Now, I am sure that you have a lot of patients asking you for guidance on this topic. So what are you telling them about the risk and the benefits of getting the COVID vaccine? Sure, thanks for having me. We've we had a lot of discussion around this and a lot of different things that uh, patients talk about around the vaccination and pregnancy and uh, lactation. Um, our patients are all individuals, and I kind of treat each patient as an individual. If they're being offered vaccine at this point, that means there's some sort of high risk group that they're in, and thus they're at higher risk of contracting the virus. So every patient I talk to, I say, well, what are your risks? You know, do you have risk of community transmission? Do you have risk in your occupation of getting coronavirus? So if so, you might wanna think about getting the vaccine. Um, if you really can be without risk and not expose yourself, then you might be able to defer like the patient in your story to the postpartum uh, time. Um, the other problem is pregnancy has an increased risk uh, to the pregnant woman. So if you contract COVID during pregnancy, well, most people do really, really well there's an increased risk of hospitalization, intubation, preterm delivery, as well as ECMO, which is basically a heart lung machine for those who become pregnant. Um, so that risk versus benefit for some people, if they're gonna be exposed, is something to truly consider. Let the other thing is, go ahead. Let me ask you this, You know, what's your take on high risk pregnancies? Cause you did mention that, or uh, patients with a history of preterm labor, for instance, do you have a timeline or is there any guidance on a timeline? Maybe wait until after 20 weeks or some point in your third trimester? So we know that um, you can't have the vaccine within two weeks of other vaccinations. And um, ACOG and the American College, uh, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommend the whooping cough vaccine be given sometime around 28 weeks to the pregnant woman. So we actually are recommending women who have the opportunity get the vaccine when they have the opportunity and do not delay till later in pregnancy because it may delay other vaccines that are necessary for pregnancy. 
totally understand. Last question for you. We have about a minute left. Based on what scientists know, what doctors know, what you know about vaccine, vaccines overall and this mRNA method, how would the unborn baby be affected, if at all? So we know that mRNA vaccines work in a very small set of your body to work directly to help your body make these spike proteins against the coronavirus. We know that this mRNA is pretty unstable. You guys all can see that by, you know, the temperatures the vaccines are required to stay at and how quickly they need to be distributed after they're warmed up. So we know that it, in the body, it doesn't last very long. Because it gets broken down very quickly in the body, um, currently the belief is that it cannot cross the placenta to get to the unborn baby. Um, and if you're lactating, the stomach acid, even if it got to the breast milk, would digest the mRNA and have no effect on the lactating baby. Um, we do know that there are some hope for the antibodies that are formed to cross over the placenta to help that unborn child. But there's been no evidence of adverse events to the unborn child after getting vaccine. In addition, people are volunteering after they get vaccine. Um, and there's about 15,000 women in a registry currently looking at vaccine um, in pregnancy. So hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a lot more data. Um, at the medical center, we've been trying to make sure that everybody who can get offered vaccine does get offered vaccine and that we make sure we prioritize people who need it. All right, Dr. Crimmins, thank you so much for your time. Glad we were able to catch up and do this interview and shed some light on this topic for our viewers. Thank yeah. you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Have a great day. Well, head to WJLA.com. Yesterday, I caught up with Dr. Diana Bianchi, director of the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development, about a task force addressing the need for pregnant and breastfeeding women to be included in medical research. You can find that discussion, this story, and this interview you just saw right now on WJLA.com. Most of the precipitation has moved out of here, but we're left with some pretty icy conditions this morning. And Brian, you've actually even seen a few final flakes still coming down. Yeah, in fact, right across the district, in Northwest DC, there were some pretty hefty flakes. I've been watching that camera, and interestingly enough, honed in from our tower cam down to the streets of Northwest, where I had once seen pavement, now I see a light coating. So you can even see there on those streets there in Northwest, tire tracks, because that little hit of snow that we just had, that last little thump, did coat the road somewhat and we're all still up below freezing so that's why you just have to be ever so cautious especially on those secondary streets sidewalks and just outside your door right now a little bit of light snow 31 going for 39 this afternoon we will look for a few peaks of sunshine from west to east by 10 11 o'clock we should start to get above freezing but those clouds do linger for a good chunk of the afternoon listen next couple of days we are going to be dry for saturday and sunday yes but look at those numbers saturday 33 wind chills will make it feel much colder so prepare for a blustery one but by sunday we're going 37 and into next week 40s potentially even some 50s in the mix as far as weather makers we are tracking a chance of a little system on monday that could feature a few wet snowflakes but i think predominantly it looks more to be rain and by later in the week we're talking 50s so maybe another shot for some rain by the end of next week That's John, you and I had the same idea. I have my scraper and brush out as well. So I'm in Roslyn right now. I'm standing alongside Wilson. You can see the roads are really well treated out here. That's not the case all up and down Wilson. That's not the case on every road. You will see that this doesn't have as much of a sheen, but elsewhere, this is what's falling. This is the uh, freezing mist and rain that we've been talking about all morning in the fog. And it's freezing because it's so cold out here. So if you're going on a road and you see it extra glossy, you're probably going up pure ice. So be very careful. And this is what we're talking about. So this was snow that fell. Look how hard this is. I mean, now it's just iced up because the water is falling right now. In fact, it's misting really heavily out here. And as John was showing you, it's really, really hard to scrape off your windows. This is a car that has been out here for a while. This driver is not going to be happy when they come out elsewhere on the ground. It's the slushy stuff. I actually parked alongside the street on Wilson and my wheels were spinning as I was trying to parallel park. So yes, definitely icy conditions out here, but the roads are treated. Just be sure to differentiate between, you know, asphalt that's not shiny and asphalt that looks slit, slick because it is covered with ice. All right, Lindsay. What